Welcome. <laughs> I hope you have your tea ready and some notes. <laughs> and notes. Um, yes. We're so excited to have you join us tonight or today, whatever you are in the world. Um, thank you so much for joining our workshop. We've, we've prepared hours. We spent a lot of hours preparing this workshop. So we're really, really grateful that you're here to spend time with us. Um, we are so excited to share our experience with you as um, live event artists. Um, we have a lot um that we want to share today uh, we have a lot of tea to spill so um stay until the end because we have some exciting announcement um after our presentation it's gonna be good <laughs> <laughs> um, but before that just wanted to introduce myself my name is talisa from rosane art i'm based in toronto canada um, I am a uh, engraver, paint, uh, painter as well, well, painter now, <laughs> um, and a calligrapher. Um, and, um, and I've been doing live events since 2019 consistently, and it's been a lot of learning and can't wait to share with you. So Michelle, you can introduce us. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle. I am the owner behind Juniper Calligraphy and the Fundamentals of Bottle Painting. I do all of them, same like Talisa, I am a bottle painter, I do engraving, and I also do calligraphy. So I also do this on site, in studio. I've been running my business for the past four, five years or so. So we're really excited to share what we have learned with all of you guys. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So we have some presentation that we're going to be uh, walking through with you. And we're gonna be in the chat room to answer every questions that you have. So um, without further ado. Yeah, let's get started. Yeah. Okay. So okay. hello again. Um, this is our little presentation. We are going to be talking about confused to confident in bottle painting and engraving for on-site events. So. All right, so we're so excited to um to present this to you because the holiday season is coming up so we want to talk about why it's so important to pick up um new skills all right so but before we get into the meat, meat the the meat of the presentation we wanted to introduce um to you who we are and why are we teaching why are we talking about this so first of all my name is talisa talisa rosane from rosane art so i'm based in Toronto, Canada. I specialize in calligraphy, engraving, and now painting, thanks to Michelle. <laughs> and I'm also the instructor of hand engraving course for calligraphers. Uh, I have a lot of clients that I've worked with, um, that I have worked with in um, doing all these live events like Gucci, Gail Lounge, Joe Malone London, just to name a few. And Michelle, you can introduce yourself. Hey, this is me. I'm Michelle. So I am the owner of Juniper Calligraphy based in Honolulu, Hawaii. And I specialize in calligraphy. I got better at engraving because of Talisa and also painting. Um, I am also the instructor of the Fundamentals of Bottle Painting course. And I have worked with clients like Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale's, Bottega Veneta, and most recently Duty Free Shops and much more. So that is a little bit about us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> so the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. So this is what we're going to be talking about. This is today's tea. This is why we want to share some knowledge with you. Um, the first thing that we're going to be talking about is what is the market? What is going on? What is the strength and weakness in um in our uh, experience as a life event artist? Um, and then we also talk about why, um, in terms of the why, as in, in terms of like the market of the life event artists, um, why do you need to upgrade, um, our skills? Um, so we're using the SWOT analysis, um, as we talk about our journey and then Michelle, 
Oh, yes. And then we're going to tell you, or we're going to talk about after that education. So how we can um, avoid these threats that may come our way. Um, and then after that, we will get into the demonstration. So this is the fun part. You'll get to see our setup that we both use for on-site painting and engraving. And to finish off, you guys might have questions. I know that that always happens. So we can get into the live Q&A session after we're all done with today's tea. So let's get- So make sure you have your notes ready. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> get your notepads. Okay. All right. Okay, so, um, so I mentioned earlier that we're going to be sharing our experience, our journey as a life event artist, but we're gonna be applying the SWOT analysis. So if you don't know what SWOT analysis is, it stands for the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. So I'm gonna talk about the strength and weakness, what they mean. The strength really basically describe what you're good at, what your expertise is, what your current niche is, and what separates you from your competition. And the weakness is basically, well, the opposite, what you need to improve on or like what skills that you don't have yet. And then there's the opportunity. So that refers to um, things that can give you an advantage over the competition or to um, combat whatever weaknesses there are. Um, and then there's the threats, of course. So this is something that may prevent you from getting to that potential opportunity. So we will show you, we will go through each of them and show you how we can um, make it better. We can build our strengths and get rid of those threats. So. Let's get into that. Here we are. Here are both All right. <laughs> so we're actually sharing our um, journey because we know that it's so relatable to you as a calligrapher um, who wants to start getting into the uh, engraving, um, um, you know, engraving market or bottle painting market or even both. Um, so this is based on actual, like our live experience. Now, um, I, so I'm gonna talk about um, my situation. I have a strength in engraving, I teach it. It's, it's, it's something that like, I feel like I know it so well, it's like I'm driving. But every single time I am doing engraving event, um, usually at department store, I always get asked, can you also do bottle painting? Can you also paint? Like literally almost every single time. For like the last three, four years, I had been asked if I could. Now, I, I'm actually, I can, I'm actually familiar with painting because I've been painting since I was a kid, but I was only familiar with painting on canvas. Mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't know anything how to paint on bottle or glass or stuff like that because I knew it would be different. And then there's also, you know, the uh, the the pressure of doing it so fast. Mm -hmm. So that was my weakness. I knew how to paint, but I don't know how to execute that as a life event artist. Yeah. So that's my strength and weakness journey. So Michelle, you can share yours. You know, that was like kind of my opposite. Um, I am also a live event bottle painter and engraver, but it wasn't always like that. So I like to Lisa, I've been painting for over 10 years, but this was mainly on um, wood surfaces or canvas. I did a lot of that. Um, but recently I had an order to do um, champagne bottle um, personalizations. And we all know that we can't engrave on that. So I had to pivot my skills and learn how to paint on glass instead. So over the last couple months, I have been working oh, a year, beginning of the year, I've been working on, you know, painting on glass instead. However, because I spent so much time doing that, I sort of did not practice my engraving. And I know that's something that they always ask for when you're on site, but I didn't do it because I wasn't confident with those skills. So that actually brings us to the next slide. Um, so why did we do this? Why was it so important that we continue to grow our skills and learn how to do both bottle painting and engraving? So um, Talisa, do you want to take it from here? You have a lot of experience in doing uh, live event engraving. So. Yeah. So um, I actually, um, I was already fully booked for 
engraving at um, Holt Renfrew. And they also booked me all the way from beginning of January 2022 to January 2023. Um, but at that time, it was only for just for engraving because that's the only thing that I only ever knew how to. And then I, I mentioned to um, the, uh, the marketing manager like, hey, you know, I can actually do painting now. Um, and when I approached the idea, I already had my website ready, you know, have my proposal ready. Um, this is all after I went through uh, Michelle's course. Um, and then she's like, okay, yeah, we're, we're excited to, you know, to have you on board to do some painting too. And I didn't, I, I came in, I was so nervous. <laughs> um, but, um, but I went in and I had my, you know, I did some samples and everything. Um, and it was really busy. Um, I learned so much about why you need to paint fast. Um, and like, you know, the time management skills was like a, way different than when you're just doing engraving. So, um, so then I, I, I wasn't sure how I was doing, but I, I, you know, I emailed them back saying love. So, the, you know, she always sharing my pictures. And then the marketing manager sent me this message on the left. She said, hi, Talisa, I hope you're doing well. I heard such a great feedback from painting this weekend. And then she wanted me to come back literally a week after. That was not even scheduled um, at all. So she just wanted me back because, because the associates on the floor were really happy. <laughs> um with my work and honestly I don't think I would have had that confidence if I hadn't taken Michelle's course because I wouldn't know what what tools I should be using or like you know how to do it really fast what things things that I have to consider when and I'm painting and both engraving you know it's just um that's my story that's yeah. the opportunity that I realized that it's you're just becoming more marketable when you can do both Oh, totally. Yeah. I and mean, you were doing both like engraving is its own thing already. And then to switch over to painting at the live event, that's, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, I have to tell you. And I've gone through the same thing. I actually have a very similar, it was kind of the opposite story from you. Um, I was contacted by DFS, the duty free shop at the Honolulu airport. So they asked, me for bottle painting first because that's kind of what I do I, I mean I can in engrave but it wasn't as good so they asked for bottle painting but because they knew about engraving they asked if I could do both so that's where I got really scared um, I have done live events for bottle painting but not so much for engraving so duty free shops was my first time actually engraving on site and at that time I had signed up for Talisa's course because even though I was doing it in my studio I did not know how to do it like on site so Talisa's course really shows you how to do it quickly how to manage your time how, these little tricks and tips that would just make it go faster so that you can have time to like do other things you're not spending too much time drafting you're just like going in for it and getting it done and it looks really nice too so that is the opportunity that we created so um I was booked all throughout their annual beauty event which went from uh November August throughout October and um after that my contract is about to end and so they even contacted me this is what they said over here so they contacted me again to hire me throughout the holiday season so I had sent them some photos I sent them my feedback and they said hi Michelle these look amazing I'm so pleased to hear that you're enjoying it DFS has been in touch to inquire your availability for the holiday campaign. So it's another 15 to 25 days throughout November um, and even throughout the first week of January. So they want to book me for that entire long period again. So the opportunity is there. You become so much more marketable when you have the two skills. So it's so important. Like, I don't know if I would have gotten booked if it was just one or the other. They like having both there. They know it's a good value. Yeah, it's like a one-stop thing, right? It is. You can do, you can have both all right there and the client doesn't have to go anywhere. Now that we've talked about the opportunity, we want to talk about the threat. And you're probably wondering like, what is it? Okay, so this is based on, again, real experience. The threat is 
Losing opportunity to another artist who can do both engraving and painting. That's um, me. That the gingerbread. It's me. <laughs> that would have been me. Gingerbread. No, it's so sad. It's like for Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's real. That's the opportunity. So I mean, the the threat. The threat is losing the opportunity to another artist who can do both engraving and painting. And this is actually a true story that an artist had told me. She said that in her location, she was, she actually lost the job to a bottle painter, even though she's a live event calligrapher and engraver. So they had chosen someone who can do all three. And for me that like, I don't want anybody to be in that situation because, you know, we're growing our niches. We need to always keep on like growing our skills and keep up with it. So I don't want you to feel like you are in competition with somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And um, the reason why it's so desired, like the uh, having two, um, two skills at the same time is say, uh, for me, obviously I'm faster at doing engraving than bottle painting. Um, so if someone, if a client wants something really fast, like less than a three minute, then I can just say, okay, I'll just do a name and then they're happy, you know? Um, but if I had a longer time to personalize the item, then I can give, you know, more service. I can like, I can paint it and engrave it at the same time, or I can just bottle paint it. So having that option really, um, gives, um, an added value for the uh for the client that you're working with and you just becoming more buzz worthy like you just it really attracts um the service the sales really well and um and honestly the associates is gonna like love working with you when you can do both um with confidence Confident. um yeah and then i mean i can see why i mean i i have lo I, i'm pretty sure i have lost an opportunity because I was only be able to do engraving I didn't know how to do painting mm -hmm. so I like you know now that I the reason why I wanted to learn how to do bottle painting is because I wanted to be more marketable and not losing that opportunity again especially with like my dream clients so right. that that actually reminds me too so I'm doing this at the airport right now and we all know that you don't got time when you get to the airport. So I am able to opt for them both options. So I even had a lady who was like telling me like she only had a minute and I was like, okay, I can do engraving in one minute. So luckily I had my, all my supplies there and I was able to just write her name very quickly, rub and buff and that's it and have her go off. Had I only had my painting supplies there, I don't even think I could write her name in one minute with and let it dry. So being able to offer the two is really, really helpful, just depending on how much time they have. So that, mm -hmm. that was a really good point, Talisa. I do. That made me remember like my, my experiences. It, it's true. Yeah. Like you can't even let her on it with that time. But yeah, yeah it's dry time. it is a dry time with engraving. There's like no dry time at all. Like, oh yeah, just one minute and it's done. <laughs> I know, right? It's so fast, yeah. but it's nice to have both. So. Yeah, of course. It's the painting it's that makes mm -hmm. it like, it makes it more of a performance. Mm -hmm. so, so engraving is more of a personalization, mm -hmm. but painting is a performance art. Mm -hmm. So it attracts people even more. I notice that people show up more when I do both bottle painting and engraving. It's very um, true. You're, like, yeah. you're, you're sitting there, you're like a, a live Monet, like just yeah <laughs> so wow, like it's just you know the it color is. and everything it really attracts people and and that's what the client want right mm -hmm. you're an entertainer that's why we're there yeah exactly. you're an entertainer when you're doing live events all right so we have this threat going on so to combat the threat we want to help you expand your opportunities and services so that you never fall into the threat area. So how we are going to help that is through education of our courses. So Lisa, I love your course so much. Let's hear about it. All right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually both, as you can tell, each other's uh, students and teachers. Um, I learned a lot from Michelle and Michelle learned a lot from my course. Um, I love my course so much because it, 
everything I learned by myself, um, all the stuff that I have thought in the course is basically based on what inquiries, what experience I've had in my engraving career. So um, I teach about how to engrave on glass, plastic, stone, um, and I also teach pyrography because once you're in the engraving, um, once you're in the engraving field, you're going to be asked if you could do wood and leather and so on and so forth. And I have been doing that for life events as well. So it really prepared you to make a career out of it. It's not just for hobby. Um, so because I want, um, because this, the value is where, how can you make it back and even more, right? And I, because of that, I also talk about, um, the, uh, the business of hand engraving. So it covers, um, modules about pricing, uh, how to market yourself, how to take pictures and, um, and also, um, how to, um, how to get yourself ready, um, as a life event engraving mm -hmm. and um yeah it's really just make sure that you're ready to be a professional engraving artist in your area that's like the so, whole deal like everything from start yeah. to finish you could be like a, a beginner and get right into it learn how to do it and start making money from your skills right away or yes you can be um, like seasoned engraver like I was. I was engraving for almost uh, seven months before I joined Talisa's course. And by then I had a lot of experience doing it in studio, but um, coming into Talisa's course, I was able to pick it up really quickly. I picked out all the, the little tricks and tips that I liked and I was able to apply it into my own practice and all of her business stuff, super helpful. Um, it's sort of what I offer in my course too. So I do the same as Talisa, um, very similar. It is great for beginners. That's how I based my entire course. It even goes as far as back into like how to hold your brush. What is the correct position to hold it? And what finger do you hold it on? Where do you hold it? So if you have no experience, this is like perfect. Um, I even talk about what paint I love to use, what kind of sealer, what brushes. We even talk about how to do very quick painting, so speed painting. I teach about the one and done technique where I have modified that so that it you're able to paint very quickly on site with just, you know, just doing it very fast one time and then you put the sealer and then you're done with it. So after we learn that technique, we go into the skills and how to make the actual flowers. I even teach about techniques. So where do you place it on your bottle? There's different ways that you can put it to make it look cohesive together. After that, we even do some live event training. So I teach you how to time yourself to make sure that you're within the certain time frame. We don't go over on it because when you're at a live event, you you know, Talisa, we only have like five or 10 minutes to like quickly get mm -hmm. through it. <laughs> so after that, yeah, that that's the real thing. So we, we make sure we um, time ourselves. Um, I also have a business side to my course too. So where I talk about mindset, we talk about pricing, we talk about how to prepare for your on-sites. I also teach you how to take very aesthetic-y photos. Is that even a word? <laughs> very nice photos. <laughs> That's my <good> word. <laughs> Is that our new word now? Yes. <laughs> I teach you how to do nice photos. And then we also talk about like the business, how to get in it, how to get yourself seen and noticed, how to get hired. Um, I also have a bonus module in mind, like Talisa. I talk about how to paint on different surfaces, like ceramic, uh, leather, which is a, another huge one, um, glassware and plastic. So these are all the types of materials you may encounter when you're doing live bottle painting. And um, I know Talisa was saying that she's been handed a lot of plastic um, makeup containers so you want to be prepared on how to paint on those types of surfaces. And I do show you that. So we can, you can already see already that both these courses really mesh together. Um, they are, they are very like sister niches. That's what we, we name them. Yeah. They are. <laughs> and I, I, I do want to say, because I'm a student, so my testimony is that even though I have a painting background, I learned mm -hmm. a lot on how to paint fast. Um, and the technique that she teaches, the one and done. I mean, okay, think about it. When you're on site, you won't have time to draft. 
like you're doing everything under pressure. You can't be slow, right? So she really teaches you about the composition and the different styles. So then like you're really ready to just provide that service to the customers. And I think that's really important in the course, knowing those tricks on how to do that fast. Um, because um, clients really look at how many um, how many things that you can personalize because they a lot of times they want to ask how many that you've done right mm -hmm. because they want to see the, how how much it has helped their sales mm -hmm. right so um, and I and then she really really prepped um, you to be ready and a lot of her students have I've seen have transformed from not knowing how to hold a brush to really doing live event paintings like ongoing consistently so that really tells you how good her course is so <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> we're probably like you're probably wanting like um how how why is it value well um we are both very experienced instructor what i meant by that is that we both have been consistently booked to do both whether engraving or bottle painting or now both I do believe that when you're learning from instructor who have been consistently been doing um, what they're teaching, um, there's value in it. The value is that you know the trends, um, right? And you know what the customer's like, you know the new bottles that's coming out and whatnot. Um, and it's just more value. So you really, you can really understand the, um, what the customers want when you're consistently booked. And then we're teaching you, we're also teaching you what's new, what the new tricks, you know, um, and that's why I feel like it's important. And this is just some of the uh, clients that we've worked for, a okay. uh, com combination for both of us. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't actually put all of them because of space, but um, I'm not, not really bragging, but we're just showing you that um, it's important to learn from someone who's been there, who's made a lot of mistakes already, who's, you know, um, really been in the situations where you have to um, time manage, mm -hmm. where you have to uh, manage the customers and whatnot, because we're very, we spill everything in our course. So this is just our experience, how we were able to use that and teach you guys everything that we know so you can really just skip all the headaches, skip the trial and error and get ahead to bottle painting and engraving already. So that is the education section. Um, also for education, uh, we both are very active in our chat support groups. So Lisa, do you want to explain a little bit about our uh, lovely Discord groups? Yes. So we both have Discord channels, which we love. Um, and it's very relaxing, chill environment. Um, you could literally even talk about anything, even your day, and then I'll still be there. For, we'll still be there for you. Um, because we wanted to make it a very inviting environment. So this Discord is a place where the students can ask any questions about um, the engraving or bottle painting. And what I love about it is that the team, um, I will say the students, the community, they also always put their input. You know, um, sometimes there are things that I didn't even know about. You know, someone was talking about pitching and then, and I just pinned that message. And, you know, like we're all, I'm not, even though we're both instructors, I am still learning a lot. So, um, and I love sharing what we're learning. And this Discord is a place where students can get immediate support, whether it is something that I'm familiar with or whether it's something like, oh, I never thought about it. So I never included it in the course. Um, and there's different channels. There's, you know, uh, chat about pitching, chat about um, our on-site shenanigans, <laughs> or like, you know, if someone wants to um, reach out to someone, like we're always supporting each other. And it's very active. You get mm -hmm. immediate answer. You don't have to wait for a month. You don't have to wait for like a week. You'll get immediate answers. Right. I love that part because sometimes we have questions right away and like we love instant gratification. We're like, we need the answer like now. And luckily yeah. there's just, there's people in there that like, you know, you get the notification on your phone. It's like being in a, a chat room or like getting a text message. Like we get the notification right away. 
easily answer straight from your phone and then it uploads it. So it's, it's really nice. I, I really love the, the discord group because sometimes in the business, you feel like so alone, like calligraphy, engraving, painting, like, you know, we're just in our studios all the time. We don't really have a community. So having something here where we can chat with each other, you know, like network with other bottle painters or engravers, it's just a nice place to be in. And um, everybody's friendly in there. We don't let no yeah. bad vibes in. So it's all <laughs> not at all. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we have refer jobs yeah. too, right? Right. Um, I know Michelle, yeah. you refer jobs that are not in your um, area. Um, mm -hmm. Our students refer jobs as well. So it's mm -hmm. it's a great, great community. I and know. this is not in the, this is, you get immediate access to um, the Discord um, channel once you re-enroll to the course. This is um, for ongoing support with our um, groups over here. So um, with both courses, you do have lifetime access to it. So with the lifetime access, you will always get updated. Um, I know I, both of us are constantly thinking of ways to, how can we make this better? How can we add more value to it? Because things are constantly changing. What is current today is not going to be current for a few months from now. And we always want to keep you updated, and especially from someone who is still in that market, who's still been working a lot at it. And we want to keep you guys updated as much as possible. So with our lifetime support, you will have that you get the immediate knowledge from us whenever we hear it. I know Talisa just goes right into Discord and she's like, this is what's happening. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And this is why I love lifetime access. You know, you're busy. We get it. Mm -hmm. You probably won't be able to look at the course six, six months after from now. We understand. Mm -hmm. Totally get it. And, um, you know, you have responsibilities. It's, it's totally okay. But this is why you can learn at your own pace. Right. Um, and also we want to have that lifetime access because like what Michelle said, things change. Marketing strategy changes all the time, you know, um, because society change. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make sure that you're updated with those changes. And um, you know, if or we come across something that's totally new based on our experience while we're doing live events, we wanna let the students know first, um, whether through the score or whether we update it on the module. So um, so you really get the most of this uh, courses. Mm -hmm. And we also, me and Michelle, we always talk about, mm -hmm. you know, new marketing trends and whatnot, like how mm -hmm. do we add that on our course? So we, we basically, um, yeah, we, because again, like it's based on experience, society change, so marketing changes, and that's not always an ongoing change. And you always get that update. Oh yeah, that's that's the value right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. okay, so with all of these here, <laughs> with inspiring instructors, support, lifetime access, education, we bring you to from from confused to confidence and clarity. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and that that is our goal. Um, that's our goal in our. Um, courses that also you know we we just want to elevate we just want to elevate um this niche we don't want to dominate we just want to elevate the community we just want to provide the resources that are available that we um that we both experience and learn and even though we are teachers we're still learning mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're happy to share those knowledge um in our community and so then the more the more that you know, the more you're confident, right? That is the confidence and clarity. All right. So this is the fun part. Um, I'm sure you guys want to see how we have our setup for bottle painting and engraving on site. So we both wanted to show you our setups. Yes. So this is it. I'll have you go first, Talisa. I love your look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so this is my typical setup. Um, I usually have a, a like a, a black uh, mat or blotter. Um, I like all black because typically when you're doing live events, especially when it's like a luxury high end brands, they want you to wear black. Um, at PR events, sometimes they ask you to 
wear a certain color depending on the theme of the uh, the event but typically it's all black that's what all of my stuff are black so i have my black engravers which is the yoke fellow which is i love so much love it um, <laughs> my most favorite thing ever it can do so many things mm -hmm. um it can engrave it can also work as a power bank and then i have my palette on the left and then the and then the the palette the the painting the paint safe saver and then i also have my um <clears throat> that green thing is that is where um the rinse jar is mm -hmm. and i have a bunch of um paint brushes um and because usually when i do events like a one-stop thing i also always bring my uh my pointed pen calligraphy uh nib holder so um so then i can do maybe cards or whatnot you know in the downtime and um and I also have, you know, the cotton bus, cotton pad, and um, all of that on that little tray right there. And that's where I put my rub and buff or the gilding wax and uh, my sticky notes um, and also the, uh, the rubbing alcohol dispenser, the push dispenser. And then I have my burr loop on the left. And then the little block white on the top right there is where I put my name my nameplate which is surprisingly the same as what michelle has <laughs> we didn't even know we're like twinning unknowingly yeah, twinning <laughs> we're twinning without even knowing <laughs> i know right we just saw yeah. it today and we're like we're the same <laughs> isn't that amazing great mind things alike i know right, right? yeah here. and yeah so and then on the top of so that the nameplate also can um store where the um the business card is business card is so important to have mm -hmm. um and then on the left bottom is where i engrave um that's like you know my cushioned um and that white gloves i usually like to wear gloves so then it doesn't leave uh so then the bottles doesn't leave too many handprints so um yeah just yeah most of the stuff i got are from amazon um um except for you know the the, the palette that because I'm a student, I was gifted by Michelle. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I have something similar like to Lisa, everything over here. I try to keep it very minimal because I don't have a lot of space when I go to DFS. So I have the same. I have my, um, uh, on the left side, I have the engraver, my goggles, I have the burr lube, I have um, my little um, hand a bean bag thing and it almost looks like yours, Lisa. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> it almost looks the same. I also have like the push alcohol container. I have my little cup with all my brushes, my rub and buff, like everything that I need, pens. Um, I even have brush pens in there. Uh, next to that, I have a black Q-tip. We even have the same Q-tip. Oh my God. <laughs> We love dog Q-tips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cotton pads. Really think about it. <laughs> I know. The white ones are nice, but when you're on site, it's just so cool to have like black Q-tips there. And then of course, we both have like the same palette. Um, I have my water jar in the back. It's just an old jam jar. And then of course, my name plate, which I place in the front so that everyone can see and take a business card if they want. And then underneath everything is a leather blotter. So that one you can just roll up. It, it folds really easily um, and you can just carry it out like a little um, hand roll. Um, but that's to protect the table because sometimes when you're like at an event, they're you know, it, you, just, you just don't want to get it dirty. So you keep everything contained. I see you have one too, Talisa. So yes. um, I forgot to mention, um, because we are also using the same engraving drill, mm -hmm. um, it's standing because it came with a, a base stand. So that's where we put our birds inside. Um, it has enough space to put like a lot of birds, like a fresh mm -hmm. birds. Um, and and I feel like that's just, it saves a lot of space. Um, and this is why I love that drill as well. It's also like, um, well, for me, it was $150 Canadian. So it was 120 USD, I guess. Um, so it's, you, you really get a lot of, and, and the battery lasts for so long. <laughs> like I never lose a bar. <laughs> I, I love our setups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chef's kiss. I know, chef's kiss, yes. Yeah. 
That is fun. I love it. That's the end of our presentation. So next we're gonna have we're gonna open our Q and A after this. Yes. For you. Okay. The chats are recorded, right? It's recorded. Yeah. Perfect. So we don't have to like repeat what we uh, have answered. Um, there's some questions that I, I didn't get a chance to answer. So right now, because we have the Q&A, mm -hmm. um, someone asked about the Yoke Fellow. Um, Kalisa, is the uh, 35,000 RPM Yoke Fellow good enough as the Mestiza, or do you recommend the 40,000 one? I recommend the 40,000 RPM because um, for, for coated metal, um, I like to go at 40K because it's easier. So you don't have to dig as much as the K. 100% it is way better than a Mistisa. Um, it's also a better price. Um, I love it so much. And um, you're definitely gonna love it too if you have a chance to get your hands on it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone asked about ink or color spills, any recommendations for a quick cleanup? Do you have any uh -huh. feedback on that, Michelle? For a quick cleanup, make sure you have a, like I like to have paper towels on the side. I also have a leather blotter that I put yeah. over the table. Yeah, always bring that. Um, yeah. And it, you can find it on Amazon. I think I got mine for like $15. Um, yeah. And you can choose different sizes. So it protects the table just in case. Mm -hmm. It also makes you look more professional. It does. Um, and um, because sometimes you do ask me, some brands ask me, ask you, can you bring a blotter? Um, and because they don't want their, you know, stuff to be ruined, which I totally get. Even for calligraphy, I, I use that too. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked me, uh, Lisa asked about the deco, so I can, I'll let you answer that, Michelle. Oh yeah, okay, so Lisa asked, when you paint over your art with a deco art clear sealer, do you try to keep it on the painting only and not on the glass surface so you can see? Yes, I try to do that. So I get a Q-tip and then I just dab it right over the painting. As long as it's like dry to touch, you can add it on. Um, if you're putting it all over the glass, it's kind of a waste because you don't need to seal the glass itself. So great question. All right, I'm gonna go like really quick so that we can, you know, have everything all in yeah. one hour. Um, if there's no one ask, ask, asking any questions, I'm gonna read the questions that you've entered um, on our IG or on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, wait, someone asked, Woo! okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, wow. Palette many times in very fancy shelves. The table is so tiny with hardly room for small drying rag. I still need the palette. Um, because sometimes that's how you need to mix the color. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And Sugi, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name. <laughs> Uh, question, do you charge a higher fee to do both? Yes. Any tips for helping clients understand that these two are separate services and why the cost is higher? For context, I was approached by a high-end retailer to do bottle painting and engraving. I quoted an hourly rate that is higher for my rate to do one service, and then they declined by saying that they've hired artists who will do both and charge less, a lot less than my rate. I did not lower my rate, but I offered to do the preferred service at my standard rate they hired me but i still feel like the clarification is needed about pricing i'll be honest with you there are some artists in my local that are charging a third of my rate a third um, and doing both um it doesn't bother me um i know i oh you it, this is like a mindset pricing mindset thing you kind of have to kind of think about you know your value you know your worth so um I don't like to, you know, um, I don't want to match with someone who, you know, have that rate, um, like $75 per hour, which is obviously it's very, very low. And, um, and it really doesn't matter. You find a client that will appreciate the value and know the value and, and, um, and will pay and match your rate. That's pretty yes. much all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Like don't worry well, I about people charging less. Yeah, I do. I agree with that because you know your skills, you know the quality that you can provide and the clients will see that too. So it is really about being confident with your pricing and sticking to that. Um, I know it's different for every location. Um, what I charge is may not be the same as you, um, but definitely uh, 
if you can, if, you, if there are other bottle painter engravers in your area, you can get on par with them to see what the market is like in your area. But definitely I wouldn't lower your rates at all to match the other person. Exactly. And I think, and then it's not just your skills too. It's also how you engage with customer, your process, your business knowledge. It's, it's, it's all the, uh, the combination of those knowledge that, that that's, what, that's what we teach in our course. So other than the skills, like everything else, you can also need to know, um, right. Uh, to be marketable, um, as a live event artist. Um, so yeah, and that's why some clients, yeah, I do get ghosted a lot. I'll probably get ghosted about 80% of the time, but if they're willing to have a conversation with me on a call, um, a lot of times I actually negotiate too. So, um, and that's another skills that um, eventually you'll have confidence in. And, um, and a lot of times once I have that negotiation done, like they, they will match the rate, so. Don't be afraid about what other people are charging because they will. And I, we meant, I mentioned this earlier, but you are providing two niches. So engraving yeah. is its own thing. And then bottle painting is a, a separate thing. When you do them together, you can definitely charge more for that. So I don't know what the other person is doing. Maybe they were just doing bottle painting, not engraving with it too. We don't know that. So right. definitely like what Talisa said, don't uh, try not to pay attention to like what other people are charging if they're a lot less than you. Exactly. And again, like you're also a calligrapher too. Sometimes there are engravers that are not calligraphers. And that's another skill yes. that's hard to, to, you know, to gain. And you can literally see someone who don't know calligraphy and someone who like um, font reference, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that clients will be able, clients can really tell. Client can tell when you're using paint pen. Client can tell when you're using paint brush. Client can really tell all of that. So um, that's why we want to teach everything to, to make sure that you're being paid as a luxury um, event artist. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, we'll get to the, was there any other questions? Let's see. Uh, there was one earlier. Yeah. So I think um, we can answer the questions that we receive on Instagram mm -hmm. um, just to, and then just, for the next five minutes and then we have that announcement in the last five minutes so all right yes um okay so someone asked have brands provided guidelines or restrictions of what you can paint michelle do you want to answer for painting and i'll answer after. oh yeah um i know there is however it just depends on where you're working at um when i work at duty-free shops there are no restrictions or anything um it's basically you can just engrave wherever you want paint wherever you want there are not strict about that but i know talisa has um some suggestions on brands that I do yeah so i have received a strict guideline when i was doing a joe malone london where you want the engraving is um but as for painting or, and engraving because I do illustration as well uh, personally and legally I don't do any copyrighted images like Disney mm -hmm. Marvel and all that um, because it, it is a copyright infringement right I don't want to make put my client in a position where they're going to be sued by Disney and Marvel so I don't ever do that um, I, I suggest that you know, everyone as an artist, you also don't do that because we don't know, because Disney have people, they have people that like check around to see like who's doing the copyright and we don't want them to be on um, in trouble, right? Um, Carlo asks, um, how do you decide which flower to paint at the events? Do you provide selections of samples? Do you let customer decide which flower and color they choose. Michelle, do oh, I have? love that question. So when you're new and starting out, it can be overwhelming, especially if you don't know the techniques for other flowers yet. So what I always recommend is to have maybe three to five designs that you're very comfortable with. You can have that out and the customer can choose it. And this is especially great for high traffic, busy events because you don't have time to let the client choose because that takes time. All they can do is just come there, choose this one, and then you do it. Um, on the other side, if you're really slow, you can take on custom orders. However, I almost don't recommend doing that if you're brand new because 
like I've taken on custom orders and then gotten super slammed after that. So it's good to just stick with um, having a couple of designs at first until you're ready to start branching out from there. Yeah. And uh, honestly, it just, I, I think for me, um, I, I like to, if they're like, let me, let me do whatever, I just kind of paint whatever notes it is. And I just kind of look up what does Jasmine look like? Or like, you know, um, I photo reference a lot because I don't know a lot of flowers, what it look like. I only know peonies and roses. So, <laughs> um, um, so Bian Blanca asked, um, sorry, Nari asked, how do you pick color palette? I think that's something that we can, that's usually talk about in the course. Mm -hmm. um, Blanca asked, if I'm learning only flowers, should I call myself flower bottle painter instead of bottle painting? I'm afraid people will ask me to do more than flowers. Honestly, be generic. It, that also helps with the SEO. I wouldn't call mm -hmm. just flower bottle painter. You will be asked eventually to do a lot more stuff like basketball. I have been asked to do pet portraits. Mm -hmm. And obviously if you're not comfortable, you don't have to do it. Um, but typically in your um, the sign, it will say bottle painting. Like it's not gonna say flower bottle painting because they're gonna feel like they don't want to have a limitation. Um, bottle painting also includes like lettering so if you have a paint pen you can like calligraphy their name on it mm -hmm. um so that's under everything too and it also falls under like champagne bottles like we, yeah you can letter on it also so I would keep it as a um, bottle painting but when they see samples of your work they know that you can do flowers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um Iman asked do you charge separately for setup or transport um depending this is depending on what you, how you want to charge your payment. For me, I don't charge for setup. Um, I don't charge for transport if it's within certain vicinity. If it's far, then yeah, I will start charging mileage plus parking. Parking in downtown Toronto is very expensive. Parking in the airport could be up to $50. So um, I would definitely charge that. Um, we have a question from um, the, when, when she said that, I didn't hope that I said that correctly, but she was asking if the engraver is brushless and is oh, it available? Sorry. Uh, yes, always get brushless. Um, is it available on Amazon? I believe it's sold out, but we're working on something to have it available um, other than Amazon. So be on the lookout on that. I know if you have, um, enter the giveaway that we did um, with Irene from Rinzi Lee Designs. She's going to have some fun excite, um, announcement about that, um, which is why one of the rules is to follow her and your fellow because we have some exciting announcement about the your fellow uh, engraver. Yes. <laughs> okay. And then Neela said, do you always use glossy over the bottle painting. I do, if the because bottles are naturally glossy, you can use that. Or if you have like a matted bottle, they also sell matted um, sealer as well. So there's different kind, same brand. Yeah. Is the sign on site provided by the client? Typically they do. I always mention to my client, this is the things that usually communication between us before the event started, that they usually have, um, they usually communicate with their, um, with the customers and the associates, we're gonna have an artist coming in to do this. I like to have something in front of me just for um, customers to be able to follow me on social media and find me and whatnot. Um, so that I prepare myself, but the other, you know, communication announcement that's provided by the client. So I like to provide my QR code too. I see a lot of yes. people like when scanning it. They yeah, almost do that. Yes. Yeah very definitely you definitely need to get into the qr code because yeah. that's super super convenient all luxury brands are using qr qr code if you don't if you haven't noticed they're all like scan here to learn more and then definitely you can use that so use adobe for qr code about that um okay it's 7 57 so we're gonna stop with the q and a for now and then we have some announcement um which is a promo announcement. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you enroll mm -hmm. into our courses, regardless if it's Michelle first or my engraving course first, within the next 48 hours, you will get 
one hour consultation for free. So, um, so if you're say, for example, if you're signing up for Michelle's course, you get one hour with Michelle for free and that, that's valued at $200. And if you, or if you're buying my course, my engraving course, you're gonna get that one hour um, consultation, like a personalized one-on-one -on -one webinar for free. If you get both, then yes, you get both for free. For <laughs> both of us. And hours. But here's the thing. If you're buying one of our courses um, and then you want to buy, you know, one of our other courses, you're going to get 15% discount, which is already um, safe in the course module. You can find that code over there. Um, so you're going to be saving money. Um, or if you're already in my course right now and you want to get Michelle, you already know that you're getting 15% off to get uh, to learn bottle painting, vice versa. Um, so yeah. that's the promo. That is 15%. That's a lot. That's a $75 off. If you yeah, do. that's $75. Yeah. And we're actually increasing our prices next year. So, um, cause we are, like we said earlier, we're always growing our content. I am updating the marketing part, the business part, because that part is always changing, always evolving. So lots of value in there. We're always, uh, I put like new flowers in there all the time for the painting exactly. part is the business side is huge. Yeah. That always yeah. adding in there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Blanca had asked, so we get the 15% plus the hour. So Blanca, since you're in the bottle painting course already, if you purchase Talisa's course, you will get both, I believe, right? They get the 15% yeah. and, and, uh, and that one hour. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah one hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> within the next 48 hours, you do get yeah. that hour mm -hmm. with Talisa. <laughs> yeah, and that mentorship could be pretty much anything. It could be, we could be auditing your website if you want, auditing your social Instagram or um, or it could be talk about your mindset or um, things that you want to, you know, um, anything that you want us to have a personalized um, advice and recommendation for you. And that's, that's how anything you want, anything you private want, private painting party, <laughs> if you want that for sure, yeah. <laughs> you let us know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. It is 8.01. Um, I want to say thank you again for staying with us. Um, we truly, truly appreciate that you spent an hour with us. Um, uh, and honestly, like uh, we've, we're so excited. The replace is going to be available. Um, yes, so send this workshop. Yes, so we're going to send a replay and as well as the link to our workshop, uh, to our courses and whatnot um which what uh, michelle's gonna edit <laughs> yes it will take me about i'll get it to you guys within the next 12 hours or so it will be coming through your email so just keep an eye out for that we'll send it soon yes and if you have any questions we're we're on instagram on um emails let us know i'm probably gonna be staying up late tonight yeah. because we you know where to find this <laughs> play out <laughs> um again thank you thank, thank you, you and we're so so grateful that you spend time with us and and see you next time see you guys bye, bye.